have another one, uh, another example of somebody who did something special with Oculus Rift. Pascal Oberon, he used to, Oberson, he used to run uh, Special Moves, a big interactive studio, but uh, recently he's been focusing on doing new things. And some of you might have tried the Oculus Rift demo outside, where you actually sit in a swing and float, you know, sort of skydive over Berlin or any other city on Google Maps, of course. Please welcome Pascal Oberson. Hello, hi, I'm Pascal, and I'm going to talk a bit about uh, interacting in virtual reality. Um, so, um, so virtual reality is a new medium, and it's kind of in its infancy, and some people are comparing it to the kind of early days of film, where people didn't know how to kind of figure out how to do certain things. Um, and um, I, I think that that's um, interesting, and a lot of people uh, going into virtual reality at the moment are coming from the games industry. And uh, that's all well and good, but I think it's space for lots of other it, disciplines to come to. There's people like architects or set designers or interior designers, uh, philosophers, uh, psychologists. All of these people have got things to add, and I'm kind of really keen to be working with those sorts of people too. So um, because um, first-person shooter games are kind of where the technology has transitioned from, um, that's where a lot of the conventions have come from uh, before. Uh, but unfortunately, even the best kind of first-person shooter games don't make for really brilliant VR experiences um, for a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, um, computer games are quite intense, and VR is an intense medium as well, and if you put the two together, it's just too much. Um, having someone kind of point a gun at your head, it's quite scary, and so people are finding with first-person shooter games, if they're making it for VR, uh, that they're having to tone down things, uh, and I think generally, um, people need to have a bit more care for the audience for, for this particular medium. Secondly, um, there are, uh, your, the feeling you get in VR when it's good, it's called presence, and um, uh, this is kind of make, tricking your kind of lower level brain functions into thinking that you're somewhere else, uh, and it can be a really amazing experience, but if you get it wrong and there are mismatched signals going between your eyes and your ears, you feel very sick, and um, it's a problem uh, of hardware and software and the combination between those things. Uh, the other thing is that the control systems, uh, which I'm interested in, um, are very uh, kind of come from computer games. And so uh, I think people's expectations of VR are uh, much broader than that. And I think there's a, n there needs to be better solutions. Uh, so just a quick intro to me. Oh, there we go. Um, so um, I've been interested in kind of 3D uh, and uh, interactive design for a long time, and so this field is quite good for me. Uh, you may see some pictures here from uh, downstairs yesterday. Uh, so we set up uh, this Oculus skydive experience, and for those who didn't manage to have a go, um, you were transported up to the um, high above Berlin, and you were gradually floating down. Um, we um, made it so it's a kind of accessible experience, so you didn't have to be a gamer to figure out how to play it. You just sat in the seat, put the headset and the headphones on, and kind of steered by kind of shifting your body weight left and right. There's a few more. Oops. Uh, so one of the things we found when we were originally designing this is that um, sound makes a lot of difference. So we had some wind sounds and some sound of traffic when you get towards the ground. Uh, and also having a fan. And just having the sense of kind of air rushing at you makes quite a big difference too. And then the final thing is um, taking people's feet off the ground. Uh, people have an innate sense of how high they are, um, even kind of standing up or sitting down, based on the fact that their feet are touching the ground. And if you take your feet off the ground in the swing seat, it makes all the difference to the experience. And how we achieved it technology-wise, um, there was just a little iPhone above the swing seat, and we're using the tilt of that to measure which way people were turning. And, and that was it, and it was quite fun. Uh, unfortunately, I've, this is taken down now, um, but I've got another demo downstairs if people want to have a look after this. Um, so that was a very uh, kind of bespoke experience, and um, uh, I'm more interested now in creating a kind of more general purpose VR controller for kind of different sorts of worlds, so you don't have to have a, a new a controller for each one. And unfortunately, um, the gamepad is the kind of de facto standard at the moment, and I think that's a bit rubbish, really. Uh, it takes up both of your hands. It's really complicated. You couldn't give this to, to I wouldn't give this to my mum. She would say, well, what do all these buttons do? It's just too complex. 
Uh, so I've been doing a little bit of research into this area and trying to figure out something practical that people could use now uh, to get involved. Um, so here's a quick demo. So and a as you can kind of, this sounds and quite uh, uh, quiet, but um, I've got a one-handed navigation controller. So I've taken the navigation into one hand, and I'm using an iPhone so you can tilt left and right to turn your body, and then move your thumb around to kind of steer. Uh, and then in this demo, I've um, hooked up an, a Mayo armband. I don't know if people have seen those, but um, they go around your kind of arm, and they can detect gestures. Uh, so here I'm kind of um, pointing around so I can um, have a kind of virtual hand. I make a fist, and I throw this little grenade, and it should explode. Uh, and that's the quick demo. So if I get on to the next one. So things I found out from this is that the one-handed navigation controller does actually work. People get it within. 30 seconds or so, and so I think that that's a good way of um, uh, progressing. Um, but going forward, I don't think an uh, iPhone is the right kind of bit of hardware, and I'm going to try and put together a kind of hardware thing myself um, based on something like a Wii nunchuck controller. And uh, the Mayo is great, but it's a bit crude, and I'm looking at creating a much more natural interface using some of these time of flight cameras. Uh, so there's the structure sensor, the leap, the connect. One of these will be the right sort of thing. I think it's a combination of um, getting the right range. Um, all of these have different ranges. I'm going to find the one that works to track your hand really well and be able to kind of point and do all the things that you would expect to be able to do. Um, so that's it. Uh, if anyone's interested in this area and wants to uh, go on the Oculus demo uh, downstairs, come and see me afterwards. And here are my contact details. So thanks for listening. Thank you very much. Okay.